Well, again, my friends, welcome to uh, Vision Sunday. Anybody got faith for tonight? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm so excited for tonight. Um, this time of the year is always so special to us. Um, really, we believe in um, just being as clear and practical as possible. And so tonight, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to preach for a little bit. I want to share a word with you, our eighth value, and that's going to tie into uh, really the vision for this next year. We, we have uh, our very first vision offering. Anybody in faith for them? I know I am. And, um, you know, we've been praying. We've been preparing our hearts. Chantel and I this week been praying, Lord, what is the amount you'd love us to give? And it, it's got a few zeros after it. I'm like, all right, God, we're going to trust you. But we believe that he's told us that amount. And we're just going to step out in faith because we believe today's beautiful, but tomorrow's bright. We believe that God wants to build this church in a significant way. And so we're going to go into our giving moment in just a few moments. But I really want to uh, make it clear tonight, make it practical and really invite us as a church into where we're going, into what we are building, into really our heart for this next year. And I would argue um, not just for this next year, but for the decades to come. Uh, if you've been here for the past seven weeks, uh, we have been going through the book of Acts. And I say the book, it's only been Acts chapter two. Let's get real. Come on. Um, if you've been around here for a while, you know, we take our time through scripture. Um, we have been uh, spending a lot of time in chapter two, uh, but we've been going through this, this series called Heritage. And um, really, it has been all about how we as a people, as followers of Jesus, uh, we have a spiritual heritage that we have a rich line of family, if you will. Not perfect. Let me just make that clear. We're not perfect. But it is a, a generational decision to follow Jesus. Every decision, every generation, every day, building God's kingdom, following Jesus, laying our lives down, serving our communities, preaching the good news and being all that God has called us to be. So we have been sharing our values and I have our eighth value for us tonight. Really, I want to dive into this. Value number eight is this. The gospel is for all people. The gospel is for all people. Father, I just pray, Lord, that as we open your word tonight, that you would move, you would have your way. God, we thank you in advance for all that is going to happen tonight. God, I do believe that this is a, a, a launch pad of a night. God, that you're wanting to propel us, accelerate us as a church into this future. And God, I believe that not just corporately, but individually, tonight is a, a significant night for people in this room. That it is a night as we step out, God, you step in. So Father, I pray that, that as we lean in, God, as we step out in faith tonight, God, we would know that, that you're with us, your hand is upon us, God. And I pray for those who are just visiting tonight, maybe even those who have been coming consistently, maybe with a curiosity, maybe with a fascination about you, but who don't yet know you as Savior and Lord. God, I pray that you would continue the work that you've started in, in calling them, stirring them, wooing them, Father. And I pray that tonight would be the culmination of all that you have been doing, God, to get them into a life-altering relationship with you, Jesus. So God, we have faith for tonight. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, y'all said, amen, amen. Can we just thank the Lord in advance? We're, we're that kind of people in advance because we know, we know what he's going to do tonight. We got faith. We got faith. Thank you so much, team. Thank you so much. Uh, Acts chapter two, I want, if you have a Bible, I'd love for you to open up to the second chapter of Acts. We'll have it for you on the screens. But I, I want to pick up in uh, verse 37. And really, I want to, I want to highlight one verse. We've already read this a few weeks ago, but I want to go back, if you will, to really highlight a prophetic statement that the apostle Peter, that, that the, the disciple Peter that, that makes, he, he, he preaches this sermon and he actually says something that is incredibly significant. So verse 37 of chapter two says this, now when they had heard this, meaning when they had heard the sermon that Peter preached on Pentecost, they were cut to the heart and they said to Peter, what shall we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. That word repent 
It means like when you're driving down the road and it says uh, wrong way, turn around. You say, yes, I will. And you turn around and you go the right way. That's all the word repent means. It means to change your mind. To turn around. You were going um, down a dead end road. You were going, uh, you ever seen the movies where like the train track and it's like the edge of the cliff? They're like, oh, stop it. They're like, we don't care. We're going to go this way. It's like, you're going to die. Turn around. That, that's what they say. Repent, turn, turn. And he says this repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, here it is. Here it is. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are afar off. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. That the promise, the, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the, the promise of God, the Spirit to indwell you, to live inside you, to, to make his heart your home, that the promise is not just for you and for your children, Peter says, but he says, actually, those who are in the distance, those who are afar off. You know, Peter is speaking of both those in a uh, geographical distance, but also in a prophetic sense of the generations to come. That he says, hey, um, I'm preaching this message to you, but I need to tell you that this promise of, 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 of forgiveness, this promise of receiving the Holy Spirit, this promise of, of this life-altering relationship with God, it is not just for you here, but it is for those to come. Now, this is important because if, if we're being very honest, you know, there's sometimes maybe earlier in your life or maybe honestly, if we're just being straight up where we're walking down the street and we see somebody that maybe looks a little bit scary or a little bit intimidating. And part of us, if we're honest, we're kind of like, okay, I'm just not going to look at you. Or, you know, uh, that, that, that nation is in distress and you feel this pull to go and you're like, I, I don't know. I don't know those people. I mean, if we're just being honest, there is a, a predisposition in humanity to kind of pick and choose who we want to associate with. Can I get an Amen. I mean, if, if we're just being honest, and I know that, that we, we live in a world where there, even in parts of our world today, there are still classes and, and caste systems. And, and, and I know in the Western world, we are very privileged, but there are parts of this world where if you're born into a certain family, that's your lot in life. If, if you're born into slavery or, or poverty, that's just what it is. I mean, there, there really is a lot of division in our world. I'm not trying to paint a broad brush. I'm just saying that it is in our human nature, apart from Jesus, to have this selective mindset. And I just love that, that Jesus, that this message tonight is going to be very simple, very clear, very practical. That we see that when Jesus came from heaven to earth, when he put on flesh as God of the universe, the, the name means Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus rewrote the whole story. Jesus flipped the whole script. And now Peter preaches uh, a, a few months after Jesus ascends uh, into heaven, after he rises from the dead. And he says, hey, uh, people, actually, this, this, this good news, this forgiveness is not just for you, but it's for those in the distance. Now, now, what does that mean in the distance? Is it like, okay, those who don't live in my suburb, but still are of the same socioeconomic status or the same skin color or the same culture? I mean, what does that mean? You know, I need to tell you that when Peter is saying this, it is actually quite scandalous. Because at this time in the Jewish culture, you did not associate with people who were not Jewish. If I can take you back to John chapter four, when Jesus was on the earth, anybody remember the woman at the well? Any of you, you buy students of the word, John four, the Samaritan woman at the well. Let, let me just remind you that, that Jesus goes out of his way to go and meet this woman. The Jews at the time, they would actually, to get to the, where they needed to go, they would actually go around Samaria. They would add a long time to their journey because they did not want to associate with these people. 
But I love that, that here in this moment, this is significant. Peter is saying, God is saying through Peter, through the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, Peter, I need you to say that, that my, my forgiveness is actually not just for the Jew, but it is for those outside of your geographical and cultural and, and uh, mental barriers. I, I want to take us to Acts chapter 10, because th th this is where Peter's starting to, to get stirred. Those who are far off preaching prophetically, I don't even know if he really knew what he was saying. But in Acts chapter 10, there is this incredible vision where there is a Roman guard, a Roman commander named Cornelius. If you're looking for a baby name, there you go. Cornelius, the third. I feel that for somebody. Write that down. Who was the spirits on that? Cornelius, he's an Italian man. He is a, a commander of the Roman army. Now, I just, I'm teaching tonight, this is important. The Romans oppressed the Jewish people. They came in, they added taxes, you couldn't worship. There was a lot of oppression, a lot of animosity. And Peter is, is praying up on a rooftop. And we're told in Acts chapter 10 that Peter is told by God, hey, there's a man, um, and you need to go to him. At the same time, God is talking to Cornelius saying, hey, you need to go and ask for a man named Peter. So there is this, at the same time, God's speaking to one and he's speaking to the other. It's like this, he's wanting them to, to meet up in the middle. Hey, uh, you go find this guy. Hey, a guy's gonna come to you. You just wait. It's this incredible thing, but there was this Jewish man now called to talk to a Roman commander. Like, I, I don't know if we, like, this is like, this is like radical, like, like someone in the Orthodox uh, church talking to some, a member of Al-Qaeda. Like, it's like that. It's like, whoa, are, are you sure? And God's like, uh-huh. Yep, he's coming. I, I'm going to, you're going to meet with him. And there is this radical moment where God is using Peter as a key to unlock the door to the outside world to, to say that, hey, this good news, this gospel is for all people. There's this vision here. There's this vision. I'm, I'm truncating a lot of it for the sake of time. But there is this vision where, where, where Peter is shown this, this giant sheet, if you will, and it's full of animals and it's unclean, it's unkosher. And God tells Peter, Peter, kill these animals and eat it. And Peter says, no way, Lord. I ain't gonna do it. And God shows him the vision three times, three times. And Peter's like, I don't know what I just saw. I don't know what this means. Anybody get a vision from God? You're like, I don't know what this means. You're like, God, for real? Like, th this sounds radical. Like, you want me to go talk to them? You, you want me to go and, and associate with those people or go and, and love on them or just go and pray with them or even walking down the street? It's not, you want me to go out of my way and just tell them Jesus loves you? I don't, I don't really associate with those people, God. And God is just calling, reminding us as a church that, hey, this good news is, is, is for all people. It's, it's for all people, all people. Verse 25 of chapter 10, Peter enters. Cornelius meets him. There's this beautiful encounter. It says, fell down at his feet and worshiped Peter. Peter says, uh, get up. I too am a man. And he talked with them. He went in and found many persons gathered. Cornelius got his family. He said to him, you yourselves know how unlawful it is. Hear this. There's this whole group of Italians, these, these Romans. And Peter says, he says this, he says, you know that it's illegal for us to meet together, for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. It's illegal for me to meet with you, Cornelius. It is unlawful that we don't associate with people from other nations. But I love this, but it says, but God. <laughs> but God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. God has shown me that, that he loves all people, not just the Jew, not just the people that, that he has made a covenant with, but he loves the Roman. He loves the Ethiopian. He loves the, the, the South American. He loves the African. He, he loves the Nigerian. He, he loves the Chinese. He, he, he loves every nation. 
So when I was sent for, I had my objections, Cornelius, but he says, I came without objection because God showed me that all people are loved and called by God. Cornelius then tells him, hey, four days ago, I was praying and, and God told me, so I sent for you. And, and, and I just, I, I feel like there's, there's a word in here for some of us. That tonight God, God is stirring in some hearts. And I just need to remind us as a church that we are here to, to proclaim this good news. That's just as simple as that. that. That we as a church, we as a people, our heritage is to proclaim this good news to every corner of the earth, to every skin color, to every ethnicity, to every, every place. Go out and make disciples, the Lord says. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to make disciples. We're going to preach this good news. What, what, what is the good news? What, what, what is so radical about this news? Why should I talk about it? Well, what do I say? Cornelius says, Peter, I'm here. God told me to, to come find you. Now I want you to tell me everything God commanded you to say. So Peter says, okay, I will tell you. Peter opened his mouth. Verse 43, Peter opened his mouth. Do you know how people get saved? It's a partnership. There's two, two things in this beautiful salvation message. Jesus says in the Gospels that no one comes to him unless the Father draws him. Remember, he says that if, if I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. The word also says, Jesus says that I desire that none should perish, but all would come to repentance. God draws people. God drew Cornelius. In a vision. Do you, do you know in, in today's world, do you know what the number one testimony coming out of the Muslim world is? That I had a dream, and in my dream was a man in white named Jesus. And he talked to me and he 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 showed me how much he loved me, and I gave my heart to him, and now I'm radically changed. I'm converted. I follow Jesus. God is, is drawing people. Some of you have been on trains. I heard a testimony last week. Someone was on a train. They came tonight and they're like, yeah, this random person on the train told me to come to a church called Tribes. So I came. I'm like, oh, God is drawing people. We heard a testimony that this girl had a dream. She said, I had a dream. In my dream, someone told me to come to a church called Tribes. I'm like, God, you're drawing people. You, you, are, you are stirring people. Well, so how do people get saved? God draws them. And what do we do? We open our mouths. Peter opened his mouth. What did he say? He preached the gospel. See, Cornelius had a fascination, had, had, a, had, a, had a love for God, but he had not yet heard the gospel. For it is by the gospel that we are saved. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What do we say? We open our mouths. God draws and he brings them to us. And what do we do? We preach. We open our mouths. Peter opened his mouth and said, truly, I understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through God, Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, speaking of the Jews who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded to us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. God died on a cross. And he rose again. Then through his blood, he, he forgave us. He paid the penalty that we could not pay. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Y'all, that's the good news. That I was once 
lost and confused and hurting and dead in my bad decisions and my sin and my disobedience and God changed me. God, God healed me. What did I have to do? I had to work really hard. I had to give a lot of money. I had to be in church for 20. No, 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 no. I had to just receive the free gift of salvation. Y'all, this is the good news. God is stirring the hearts of people. And I got to tell you, who is the Cornelius that is coming to your front door? God is going to be sending people your way, not just here in this church, but, but in, 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 in your home life, in your private life, in, at your workplace. God is, is drawing people. The question is, do we really believe that the gospel is for them? Do we really believe that they are loved and seen and handpicked by God, that God draws all men to himself, that God calls all flesh to repentance and forgiveness. And, and we're going to say, God, we're going to pray and we're going to preach. We're going to open our mouths and make disciples because the gospel is for all people. Hear this, while Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. That on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell. Now the Holy Spirit falls on the Gentiles, falls on Cornelius, falls on the Romans. The Holy Spirit falls on those who are oppressing the Jewish people. The Holy Spirit is falling on, on the, the same people of the same ethnicity that hung Jesus on the cross. The Holy Spirit falls on the people who, 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 would, have, who would have said that there is no God. This is wild, this is radical that, that we would pick and choose who, who can be loved and worthy of God's grace. And God says, I love everyone. I, I love everyone and I will pour out my spirit as Paul, as Peter says, as Joel prophesies on all flesh. Friend, we need to know that God loves all people. And it may be hard to like some certain people, but we are called to love them that I'm going to love you. Why? Because I believe that God desires for you to live in eternity in heaven with him and not separated forever in hell. I believe that God desires to walk with you, not in just eternity, but in this life today. This healing, this forgiveness, this full life that, that God would so desire to know you, to walk with you, to show you how much he loves you. I love in Hebrews chapter 13, we're told in verse 11, for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So, so Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. Jesus was crucified outside the city walls, outside of the confines of the Jewish space. Jewish was, Jesus was, was crucified where the outsiders are. <laughs> he was crucified where the criminals were. He was crucified where the people that no one would ever associate with or look to where they would roam. And I just think in, 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 in the reality is, is man, I'm an outsider. We're outsiders. And Jesus would still so, so desire to walk with us, to, to die for us, to call us, to be with the outsider. That's, that, that, that's the beautiful love of God. That he's for the outsider. He's for those who are far off outside the city gates. And so what are we going to do in this next year? What, what, it, what is the vision for this year? Well, friend, it really is to continue to take this gospel message to this city, to this nation, and to the world. Wherever the Lord would desire us to go and to minister, that's where we want to be. We want to make disciples. We, we want to continue to see the work that God has done. You know, there have been so many testimonies, so many stories, so many uh, incredible, beautiful stories that that, 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 that reveal God's love and, and God's compassion and God's power, that we have seen lives changed. That we have seen people 
who have been lost and broken become whole. We have seen those who have become depressed, who have been depressed become free. Those who have been afflicted physically healed. Those who were far from God made, made whole in his family. I mean, we have seen life change. And that is why we exist to see the furthest out, to see the outsider. It's not, the gospel is not for the, the rich and the wealthy. It's for the poor and the broken. I love that, that Jesus goes out and he touches the leper. He goes and he, he associates with the woman caught in adultery. He, he goes after the demon possessed. He goes after the poor. He goes after, yes, the rich. He, he goes after all people because he loves all people. That where we say that disqualifies you and you did this and you did that. You know, God says, I, I look past that and I love you. You know, there was this interview where apparently Jeffrey Dahmer, a man who did incredibly terrible things. Apparently there was an interview where he says from his own mouth, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. <laughs> what? what? What does it mean that we could be sharing heaven with Jeffrey Dahmer? What does that speak of the God that we serve? That the, the person could do such horrific things, but yet still be forgiven. That someone could go so far and be so twisted and so evil, but yet say, God, I repent and I turn to you, forgive me. You know, in the New Testament, there is Matthew, the tax collector. The, the Pharisee says, thank God that I'm not like this tax collector. Meanwhile, the tax collector falls on his knees, beats his chest and says, God, have mercy on me for I am a sinner. That's the God we serve. The God of new beginnings. The God of mercy, the God of forgiveness, the God who would reach out his hand to someone like me, someone like you. The God who would say that your past doesn't define you. Your future is brighter. Put your trust in me. I'll heal you. I'll forgive you. That's, that's the God we serve. And that's the message we're going to take out into this city. We're going to take this message out. We're going to continue to build this church the way that God desires in line with our spiritual heritage in line with, with outreach and, and with worship and spiritual formation and missions and going to nations and preaching this gospel and going to university campuses and in the red light districts and going on the streets and saying, hey, yes, you, the outsider, God loves you. And he died on a cross for you and, and he rose again and he's calling you. Would you come to him and repent because he knows your name? He will forgive you. He will heal you of all your sin. That's what we're gonna do, church. That's what we're building. And so as we go into this next moment, I wanted to, to just highlight a few stories, a few testimonies of what God has done. And we believe that, that there is so much more God wants to do that we have not even begun to scratch the surface. And so I'd love for you to turn your attention to the screen in just a moment. I want you to, to lean into this, to really hear these words. Behind every hand is a heart. Behind every heart is a story. And we are just thankful to God that, that we have seen life change, that God has called us from a distant land to be here to start this, to lead this, so that people far from God can become whole in Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's celebrate these testimonies. The biggest thing I've found since coming to Tribes has actually been community. What God has done in my life through Tribes is something I'll be forever thankful for. A church where I believe I actually encountered the Holy Spirit for the first time. So yeah, Tribes has blessed my family. What God has done in my life through Tribes is He's given me the space to grow. What God has done in me through Tribes is that He has given me a new church family and community. Through Tribes, God has reminded me about how much He loves my worship. Since I walked through those doors, it's been an overwhelming sense of love and community and support that I've, I've never seen. What God has done in my life through tribes is simply amazing. 
He's planted me in the most loving and welcoming churches that I've ever been a part of. Since coming to Tribes and starting my journey as a new Christian, God has changed my life very much. What God has done in my life through Tribes is allowing me to have a deeper understanding of the Holy Spirit. My journey and walk with God is just getting more and more beautiful and powerful and it's getting stronger and I'm grateful for Chantel and Cody for guiding me. When finding a new church that I would find like-minded people that are so passionate about Jesus Christ and want to spread His love and good news. A church that walks in spirit and truth and doesn't leave a service without opening the Bible. I'm so thankful for Tribes and everything it has done and I can't wait to see what God does through it for the next couple of years. To grow richer in community, to grow more aware and more confident in the giftings that He's placed inside of me. And ultimately, he's given me the space to grow more and more in love with him. <laughs> Come on. You know, I had a dream six years ago. And in this dream, um, we had planted this thing that was in the desert. And there's this vision. And as this uh, flower came out of the earth and water started to pour from it, this oasis formed. And in my dream, I'm, I'm standing there, I'm, I'm singing. I, I feel the heat from the desert. I feel the cool of the water. And I look out and there are people from every corner just coming, coming from far off lands, distances, and they're coming to this oasis in the middle of the desert. And I look to my right in the dream and there's this bridge, this highway, and there's people there. And I look to my left and there's a lion and I look at the lion, the lion looks at me and the lion tackles me into the water and I wake up. And I'm thinking, God, what was that? <laughs> and that was six years ago, my friends. And I haven't really shared this with you publicly, but I believe it's, it's a time now. You know, this flower in my dream, it turns out to be a flower called the Northern Queen of Sheba Orchid. And I'm like, God, okay, I never wanted to start a church, but I had this dream you're stirring in me. Come to find out April 2019 that this flower only grows in southwestern Australia. Specifically, it grows uh, in Perth and the northern coast up. And we had believed we needed to leave America in August 2019, and, it only, and, it, and the flower only blooms in August. <laughs> it's incredible, my friends, that what God has done to get my family here. And I, I share this with you because as we prepare our hearts to build, to give, to sow, to see this vision carried out into the rest of this year to, and really not just this year, but the generations to come, we are building a church where all people and all tribes can come and meet Jesus. We are building a church where we, we will not compromise God's truth, 
We will not lean into seductive thinking. We will stand firm on the word of God, but we will preach a gospel that is for everyone. The world says, stay as you are. Jesus says, come as you are and leave the same. Leave differently, excuse me. <laughs> that, would, that would have been good for the recording. We'll have to edit that out. Let me say it again. I'm no, just kidding. Be changed, be transformed. So if we could just get practical for the next few moments. Um, if you have your phone, I'd love to just invite you to uh, take out your phone and just scan this QR code. If, if you haven't had a moment to look at this digital booklet yet, um, there's a, a, quite a few pieces in there. Uh, for the sake of time, I'd love for you to uh, just go over a few pages to where it says, we've got a future to build. Uh, we had put this out a few days ago, and this really is just a practical uh, illustration, a, a booklet of really what is this vision? What are, what are we building toward? What are we giving toward? What, what, what are we looking to see come in? What are we believing God for? So I really want to invite us as a church to really lean in, to really even prepare to ask God. Some of you have already prepared your gift, your offering. Some of you, maybe you're like, what is this? What are we doing? We are just gonna be saying, God, we're stepping out in faith because we believe that you've given us resource to see your kingdom accelerated, to see this church accelerated. We wanna talk about what we're building towards and believing for. Number two, there's two things that we're believing for in this next year. We are believing for a permanent building a permanent building of our own. You know, God birthed this church in a living room. You can see just a picture, just right over here. This next one, brother. There we go. This picture right here, this, this is our living room. And that's where we started. <laughs> Six of us on team around our table with four chairs. How about that? Just praying, believing, God, you're going to bring the team. God, you're going you're gonna to do this. God, you're going to provide. You're going you're gonna to do exactly what you want. You've called us. You're going to change lives. We're going we're gonna to preach the gospel. You're stirring in hearts. We're going to open our mouths. We're, we're going to go and, and we're going to build. We're going to preach. We're going to see life change. We really, as a church, we are a grassroots movement. We started in a living room and that's the heart we want to carry. We're not trying to get into a building to, to knock a, a, you know, hit a, knock on the, a notch on the belt like, we got a building. I don't care about that. We want a hub where we can raise people up. I want to start a ministry school. Well, I want, I want to teach you how to move in the prophetic. I want to teach you how to, how to exegete scripture. I want to, I want to teach you how to, how to hear the Holy Spirit, how to preach on the street. And we want to teach you how to, how to build disciplines and, and to just be built up because we want to send you out. We're a sending church. We're, we're, we're called to the nations. This is a big vision, y'all. I, I want to create a hub where we can have a gathering space where we can just not meet on a Sunday, but day to day. Where we can have spaces for people to come. I, I, I want a skate park in there. I want to do youth. I want to do youth tutoring in there. I want to have a, a music studio for people to come. I, I want to have uh, salons. And I want to have uh, jobs for the homeless. I, I have a big vision. We want to create a hub where people can come and meet God day by day, be discipled, be transformed, come and meet Jesus, be transformed. For the building fund, we really are looking to see 50,000 come into this. Right now, as a church, we have $66,000 saved that we've been putting this aside every month, 10% into this building, this future fund, because we believe, God, you, you're, you're doing something. We want to be able to get into a building. So we're believing for 50,000 so that we can make a move, that we can say, God, we know it's the perfect time. You're going to open up a door for us somewhere. We're going to go for it. And we're going to start creating this hub. That's, that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is this, staffing. You know, one of God's promises is that he will build his church. That's Matthew 16, 18. And that's exactly what we're seeing him do. <laughs> From starting in a living room. Well, one, one week, I need to tell you this. One week, we had a one, one lady show up. And I'll tell you what, as a team, Jehu was there. He would remember this. Jehu, you here? Yeah. Remember, remember what one lady came? And we were like, we're going to treat it like it's a hundred. 
we're going to go for it like it's a thousand. So for the one, we, we still did it for the one. I got to tell you, because I believe we did it for the one, God can trust us with the thousands. That, that God can trust us, that, that we, we're going to do it just for the one. That even if one person came, we're going to, Ken and I is going to give him high break, right? We're going to go for it. That was so off key. Thank you that Ken's up there, not me. Come on. We, we would still do this even for the one. But we, we really believe that God is growing his church since our physical launch in March of 2021. I want to celebrate this. We have seen our church at to date, y'all. Our church is over 300 people. Think, can we just thank the Lord for that? It's incredible. That's, that's community groups. That, that's that's uh, people on team. That, that's those who have families who have come. That Our church has grown. God is doing this. We've seen 83 recorded decisions for Jesus. Let's celebrate that. Come on. We've seen 80 people serving on our volunteer team, over 100 in groups, and countless others seeing life change. Can we just thank the Lord? <laughs> seeing people baptized and discipled. I mean, God is he's doing it. You know, and it is so important, okay, we, we believe in for a building, but I just believe that the, the building isn't as important as who's inside it. That the building is only a place to house the move of God. And so as we've seen our church grow, it is so important to Chantel and I that we don't just like see God blow us up and great and, you know, people come in. It's like, we want to steward this. So we, we, we believing that staff will be able to help us effectively steward this move. There's three roles we want to hire. You can see this in your booklet. The first thing we want to hire is our community department head. This would be uh, responsible for building and overseeing people care, groups care, volunteer training and development. We want to hire our little tribes department head. You know, little tribes, I got to say, our, our kids ministry, this is not babysitting, this is building. <laughs> This is the next generation, y'all. We, we take this very seriously. And we're doing the best with the space that we have and the, the people we have, but we really believe that we can even grow our little tribe space. That you are entrusting your children to us and we wanna steward them. We wanna shoot them out like arrows. We wanna train them. I want, we wanna pray over them. We wanna see them filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and, and even in their schools. Can you imagine my five-year-old daughter, I mean, she's praying for her friends. My, my son, he's four years old, he's, he's preaching. Y'all heard the story? Little preacher Brixton, he doesn't know he's preaching, but boy, can preach. <laughs> I mean, just, it's like, why, why do we have this mentality that I got to be 18 and, and legal to serve God? No, no, no. Let, I think 18 is, is too old. <laughs> Come on. Let, let's, let's get some, some 15-year-olds on the team. Come and serve. Come and build. Come on. All right, all right, all right, all right. Little tribes, little tribes. We'd love to invest in developing the resource oversight and leadership of this integral part of our church. And we'd love to hire a creative department head. You know, that would be online and in-person content management. Creation that will see the gospel message go to the ends of the earth through our God-given creativity. So the, the fund we're looking to see for that is 50,000. So the total figure we're believing for, it's a big vision, it's 100,000. And I need to tell you this, that we really believe that God had given us this amount. And so as a church, I'm not telling you to do anything other than what God is telling you to do. Generosity is more the attitude, not the amount. But I believe that as we step out in faith, we really say, God, I'm going to step out here. I'm going to trust you. I so believe in what you're doing through this house that I want to get behind it. And I got to tell you from the front, if we don't reach 100,000, we're going to celebrate. If we reach 100,000, we're going to celebrate because God is building this thing. We're just opening our mouths. We're just being obedient. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. I want to tell you as well that since uh, February of 2020, we as a church, you are a generous people. <laughs> and I need to just celebrate this, that it is our heart that we are not just, you know, saying, okay, let's receive and just sit on it and just build. No, we, we, we're, we're uh, blessed to be a blessing. So I need to tell you that since March of 2020, we as a church have given just over $60,000 away. Can we celebrate that? That we have, we have given money to kingdom initiatives, to church plants right here in our backyard, missions here in our backyard, people in need right here in Perth and also around the globe. We're just saying, God, would you lead us? 
So I'm telling you, y'all, the future is bright. We're believing God. We're trusting God. And so here's what I wanna do. I wanna pray for us. And we're gonna take a moment. The band's gonna come up and we're just gonna have an instrumental time of worship. We're gonna have some ways that you can partner, that you can give. If you're visiting here tonight and you're like, yo, what is this? I'm no pressure at all. But if you're like, hey, I, I wanna get behind this. I wanna, I wanna sow something into this. All of these proceeds are going directly into our future fund. Remember, this is, this is just a, an offering. This is beyond our, our tithe and our offering. This is say, God, I, I, I believe that there's more you can do and that more that I can do. So would you stretch me as I step out tonight? So I wanna pray for us. We're gonna put up on the screen ways that we can partner together. I just wanna encourage you, take a moment before you give and just pray. Just pray. You can stand, you can get up, you can move around, whatever you gotta do. But this isn't for your neighbor. This is between you and God. We're believing that God's will will happen in this church. That people will come to know Jesus even more than we've seen in this church. That more people will get baptized and discipled and delivered and healed and raised up and sent out in this church. That is what we're building. That is where we're going. So Father, we just pray, God, that as we prepare our giving tonight, that as we just step out, God, we just thank you in advance for all that you're gonna do. And God, we just thank you that, that this church was your plan, that this is not something Chantel and I cooked up. God, this is your call. This is your mission, God. This is your heart, God. Thank you for Perth. Thank you that we are not the only church here that you have called and birthed, God. Thank you that there is, there is a, that the, the church of you, Jesus Christ, is alive and active. Don't listen to the headline, friends. The church is powerful. The church is moving. The church is vibrant. Nothing can stop the Lord. So God, we just get into the river of your spirit and we say, God, we put out the sails. Would you lead us? May you do all that you've promised. And God, as we give, as we sow, I pray that you would bless this, God. You would bless us for our generosity, God, that you would do something in us as we step out. And so, Father, we thank you and we love you and we commit this offering to you. May you have your will in Perth and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, hey, there's a few ways you can give, you can see on the screen. Take a moment. We're going to take about five, ten minutes and just have a moment that we're going to close in, in worship. Um, and then we're going to go have some donuts and celebrate and go to front porch and see all that God is going to do this week. But hey, let's trust the Lord around. Amen? Let's trust Him. Thank you, Jesus.